The second line of defense is a non-specific immune response, just like that first line of defense, in that anything foreign that's coming in will be attacked. It could be a foreign bacteria, it could be a virus, a fungus, ultimately it doesn't matter. Anything at all with a foreign antigen is attacked in the second line of defense. So the second line of defense is a little bit like your police officer. The police officer will deal with any crime. It doesn't matter what crime it is, they are very much broadly acting to fight you know, all sorts of different crimes in the body. The second line of defense includes things like some white blood cells, particularly white blood cells that eat foreign cells, but it also includes fever, where the body temperature elevates to make an environment that's not hugely favorable for these foreign cells, as well as inflammation. And inflammation is a very non-specific process that occurs in the body where we are dealing with these foreign invaders and it will basically work to, draw, to attract and draw in lots of white blood cells to the area. The third line of defense is now specific, meaning that the targets that the uh, third line of defense will have will be very specific targets. So the third line of defense is a little bit like MI5 or, or the FBI. They will only target specific individuals and they will drive past a burglary and they won't mind. They, they will ignore that because they only have one target in mind. They're dealing with the threats that have overcome that first line of defense and are now causing trouble in the second line of defense. So this is dealing with specific foreign cells. They will only deal with one cell that has triggered their production. The third line of defense involves the T and the B lymphocytes. So whenever we talk about lymphocytes, we are referring to the third line of defense. So T, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes will only target specific cells. The third line of defense is also unique in that it is also that part of the immune system where we create a memory against those foreign cells, just in case they try to come back later in your life. So let's now take a little look at that first line of defense. Remember the first line of defense is there to provide a physical barrier against the invasion of these foreign cells. We have the skin and the mucous membranes that together do provide that physical barrier. Now this is important because without this physical barrier we could have these pathogens getting very easy access into tissues of the body. And the skin is the largest organ of the body, meaning that it has a huge surface area, whereby if it wasn't adequately functioning or it wasn't adequately working, uh, or perhaps it was damaged in a, in a way, it might allow the invasion of these pathogens through. The skin is made up, remember, of very, very, very tightly packed cells. We spoke about the skin being made up of the epidermis superficially, which is the part you feel on the top of your skin. The epidermis is an epithelial tissue, meaning that the cells are packed together and they interlock to create these tight junctions, meaning that there's no way that these organisms can get through into the tissues. Remember that the skin is also shedding these epithelial cells and that shedding process will also get rid of any organisms that try to reside on the skin surface. On the skin, remember we also have sebum, which is oil, and sebum does have antimicrobial properties. Sebum will have these properties that help to stop bacteria from replicating. We also have sweat, and sweat contains antibodies that subsequently target and attack any foreign cells that are trying to colonize on the skin surface. So it's important here to consider that sebum, the oil, and sweat, um, which of course is that secretion containing antibodies, together are able to provide a coating over the skin that does have those antimicrobial 
properties that are very important as part of your immune system defence. The other part of the first line of defence will be the mucous membranes. Remember we find mucous membranes in the digestive system, in the respiratory system, also in the urinary system and the reproductive system too. So the mucous membranes are there to provide this film, this physical protective barrier, but internally within the body. Now mucous membranes not only provide a physical barrier like the skin, but also like the skin, this membrane will secrete substances. Now the main substance that mucous membranes will secrete will be mucus, hence the name mucous membranes. Mucus will contain antibodies and mucus will help to trap pathogens and fight off those pathogens using those antibodies. It's also worth bearing that even the eye is covered by a mucous membrane and over the surface of the eye we have that physical barrier therefore but we also have tears that are produced by those tear glands. Tears also contain antibodies and tears also wash away microbes that are sat on the surface of the eye. So it's a washing mechanism. We also have saliva, and if you remember, saliva also contains antibodies too. In the respiratory system, as you can see here, we have that mucociliary escalator. We have those little cilia that are able to waft and are able to push the mucus up the trachea and up through the bronchi, remembering that the mucus is going to be trapping any particles that you inhale. So we trap the particles and the cilia sweep those particles out of this system. Now other key components in that first line of defence will be the stomach, where we have uh, functions such as stomach acid to break down any foreign cells that are present. And also it's worth bearing in mind that the stomach will uh, ultimately be receiving anything that you swallow, liquids, foods and so on. And so the stomach acid is not just there for the digestion of foods, but it is also there because we will ultimately be swallowing some substances that will contain some foreign cells that if we didn't have stomach acid present, might go a little bit deeper into this digestive system and start to cause a disease. So the stomach acidity is important because it's constantly being challenged. Again, think about those individuals that have low stomach acid. In the vagina, there is also an acidic environment, which also creates this environment not hugely favorable for bacteria. In the intestine specifically, we have functions like diarrhea. Diarrhea is a quick means of expulsion from the body. The digestive system can also create vomiting, which of course as well is a quick means of getting something out of the body. And also things like nasal hairs. In the nose, those big large hairs are there to trap inhaled particles and therefore try and remove them from this system. Remember, the nose itself is even covered with mucus.